diseases of coco now we will see the list of important diseases in coco my name is nh shankar reddy and i am doing phd plant pathology in anamalai university so these are all the list of important diseases in uh, coco the first one is the uh, black pot disease which is caused by the various species of uh, Phytophthora, that is Phytophthora palmivora, Megacarya, Citrophthora, and Capsaceae. These are all the different species of Phytophthora, uh, which causes a black a black pod disease. And the next one is the seedling blight, which is caused by Phytophthora palmivora, whereas stem canker is also caused by Phytophthora palmivora. And the next one is the vascular streak or dieback, which is caused by Ancobacidium theobromae. And then cherry rot, which is caused by Clotrotrichum gliosporides. And the final one is Coco solen suit, which is caused by Coco solen suit. Virus. Now we will see in detail about uh, one by one. So the first one is a uh, black pod rot. As I said, that uh, it is caused by the different species of uh, Phytophthora. That is Phytophthora palmivora, Phytophthora megacarya, Phytophthora citrophthora, and Phytophthora capsaceae. These are all the different species involved in uh, uh, causing black pod disease. If you see the symptoms, we can clearly see here. Uh, 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 so the name itself indicates uh, uh, black pod rot. So the pod regions or the pods can be converted into black color. So here the black color discoloration we can see on uh, pods. Initially, uh, you know, uh, a small black, I mean, a small spots may appear and uh, later the small spots uh, slowly starts to expand like a black hole. So simply we can see here the you know, initially if you see the initially brown color discoloration uh, can appear and then brown color discoloration slowly starts to spread and it finally uh, covers the entire uh, 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 pod so so this this is mainly we can see in the humid conditions uh, and the white moldy growth also can be seen so if you see the main symptoms so the black color discoloration on the pod is the one of the major symptoms so coming to the management aspects uh, uh, no spraying of bodo mixture at the rate of 1% or uh, application of, uh, of fungicides like copper oxychloride at the rate of 2.5% uh, uh, just before the onset of monsoon. That's a very, very important as I said that uh, humid temperature, uh, I mean, a humid uh, uh, environment can be responsible for this, uh, uh, in, I mean, initiation of the disease. So, uh, before the onset of monsoon, before the initiation of the monsoon season, uh, I suggest you to go with the application of copper oxychloride or bodo mixture at the rate of 1.5% uh, and 0.25% respectively. I mean, copper oxychloride 0.25 and as well as bodo mixture 1%. So coming to the next one, uh, seedling blight, which is caused by Phytophthora palmivora. The name itself indicates a blightening of seedlings. So uh, during, I mean, uh, uh, during egg stages, uh, during, uh, I mean, uh, uh, at nursery stages, uh, the egg seedlings may be blightened. So uh, initially, you know, uh, brown color or uh, small water soaked lesions on leaves can be seen. Water soaked lesions can be uh, seen on nursery stages, and these small water soaked lesions coalesces, and uh, they look like the blightening of uh, leaves. Where we had also seen in uh, lead blight of potato, initially the water soaked lesions will appear. Later, what will happen? This all starts to coalesces, and blightening appearance of uh, leaves can be observed. So these symptoms can not only seen on uh, stem, uh, but uh, sometimes we can also observe on. Uh, uh, I'm mean, sorry, they're not only seen on uh, uh, leaves, but also we can observe on stem. So the same water soaked lesions can also be seen in stem. So what uh, what will happen uh, on stem? So this water soaked lesion, if it is happens, if, if it is occurs in stem, uh, it slowly turns into black color. So initially it will happen uh, like you know, a light brown color or maybe um, a dark brown color, something like that will happen. Starts on leaves. If it is stem, it will uh, turns to uh, black in color in later days. So coming to the management aspects, remove and destroy the affected seedlings and spraying of 1% bodo mixture or 0.0% copper oxychloride just before the onset of monsoon at frequent intervals can give, uh, definitely give a great results uh, against this disease. So coming to the next one, stem canker, which is caused by Phytophthora palmivora. The name itself indicates stem canker, cankers on stem. So if you see white color growth, like moldy growth can be seen along with the, uh, we can also see here some uh, green color appearance. So mostly you can see uh, white color moldy growth can be mainly seen in stem region as well as trunk, trunk regions, especially in, in small, small branches where the pod initiation takes place or, uh, or in uh, fan branches, mainly this color moldy growth can be seen. Initially, a grayish brown uh, water soaked lesions, uh, it, it will start with small uh, grayish brown water soaked lesions. And then what will happen, uh, you know, we can see this uh, uh, clumpy or a thick uh, uh, mycelial growth can be seen. And later stages, what will happen, the reddish brown uh, color ooges uh, can be seen from the pod regions. From the pod regions, we can see a reddish brown color ooze out can be observed. 
so the the tissue beneath if you see the tissue beneath uh, the lesions shows a reddish brown color discoloration due to rotting as i told you uh, and the uh, the pod on the on the lower surface of the pod or the uh, on the beneath that surface of that tissue uh, reddish discoloration along with uh, gummy ooze out can be observed so coming to the management aspects uh, uh, wound dressing along with the bodo mixture or copper oxychloride can be uh, definitely necessary if we found any uh, wounds uh, better immediately go with the bodo paste or uh, uh, spraying of copper oxychloride i mean uh, uh, using of copper oxychloride paste also can be uh, recommended and uh, wilted branches should be removed or cutted should be removed or cutted so next one is the vascular streak or dieback which is caused by ankylosing theobromine so coming to the symptoms we can see the first indication of the symptoms are characteristics yellowing initially we can see yellowing of uh, leaves uh, uh, can be clearly seen we can see alternate yellows and uh, green patches can be seen but uh, if you see this uh, except the mid region the uh, side regions are cl- completely converted into yellow in color so initially yellowing can be seen and uh, you know uh, within few days what will happen the leaves slowly converted into uh, uh, you know uh, slowly turns into uh, like a wilted like or you know defoliation leaves can be uh, happens so initially yellowing can be observed and later what will happen low the yellowing leaves uh, so the yellow leaves slowly convert into wilted like leaves or defoliation will happen in later stages so coming to the management aspects uh, Uh, regular uh, you know uh, diseased branches can be pruned that is one of the uh, uh, one of the management practice along with the coco nursery should be not located near the diseased areas so better to uh, uh, you know uh, better to uh, place our nursery areas just uh, far from the all cultivated areas that's really better so avoid getting the seedlings from the diseased tracts if there is any diseased uh, Uh, i mean if there is any disease found we better to avoid the seedlings or the necessary uh, plantation planting materials from the particular infected area and kerala agriculture university has developed one uh, uh, vsd resistant and high yielding varieties that is uh, ccrp1 and ccrp7 are the resistant varieties and high yielding varieties so coming to the next one cherelli rot which is caused by coltrotrichum uh, gliosporoids so this cherelli rot is not only caused by coltrotrichum gliosporoids many other factors also involved here like insects or nutrients also one of the reason for uh, this cherelli rot disease but uh, it is reported that it is called by coltrotrichum gliosporoids the main characteristic symptom is mummification of fruits if you see the fruits are completely mummified and convert into completely black if you see in uh, rhizophus uh, you know uh rhizophus in uh, jack fruit so rhizophus uh, which is you know the 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 fruits are completely mummified and completely black color moldy growth can be covered on the surface so here in cherelli rot the size of the fruits can be uh, completely uh, mummified and fruits also wilt and does not produce any economical products as i told you that not only this disease uh, i mean which is caused by coltrotrichum but also insects and other nutrients also competition is also be uh, one of the problem for this uh, disease so coming to the next one uh, so for that disease i suggest to go with the application of the proper amount of nutrients so the next one is coco swollen shoot which is caused by coco swollen shoot virus so we can see here some white color insect here right so this white color insect and this uh, this is a ant and white color insect that is a mealy bug here uh, you know coco swollen shoot virus is transmitted by mealy bugs so that's why we can see mealy bugs here we can clearly see the mealy bug here right so if you see this uh, coco swollen shoot so swellings of shoot region the, so mostly the disease symptoms are we can clearly uh, observe the disease symptoms on that and the name itself we can see here coco coco is a crop swollen shoot shoot region is shoot region is swollen we can see here the uh, swelling of uh, shoot region we can see here swellings we can see here swellings so swelling of shoot region so here uh, nodes internodes tips can be uh, a swelled or swelling of nodes inter nodes can be clearly observed and sometimes the swelling of tap roots also can be observed but the major character symptom is swelling of nodes inter nodes and as well as uh, tips can be uh, observed so here uh, Uh, due to this what will happen uh, the chloroplast remains uh, small and flattened and the young ripen fruits could not uh, could not develop and they can't produce a good yield and later what will happen the size of the fruit also can be uh, automatically reduced so as I, so as i said you that this disease uh, which was a insect uh, sorry which was a, a viral disease that can be transmitted by any one of the insect mostly as i told you that uh, uh, mealy bugs mealy bugs this is the pseudococcus nigellensis is the causal uh, sorry uh, scientific name of mealy bugs which is involved in the transmission of coco swollen shoot so this is a mealy bug the white color insect this is a mealy bug and grafting also one of the reason for the transmission of this disease 
and coming to the management aspects field sanitation and control of vector can definitely helps to check this disease so coming to the arsr net definitely coco solens would mostly they will ask vector coco solens would is transmitted by mealy bug it's so very 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 important one rather than that there is nothing much to look into it mostly we can they may be ask uh, causal organs like cheryl rat which is caused by cultural organ glaze pride something like that so there might be uh, definitely coco solens it is a very very important one and you can also concentrate on uh, causal organisms that will be better